On January 16, 1920, the Great American Bender came to an end when the Volstead Act was signed into law and became the 18th Amendment to the Constitution. So began the Great Prohibition Era, brought on in part by a decades-old grassroots temperance campaign organized largely by women that had already succeeded in banning liquor in 25 states. Now the entire country would go dry. Everywhere, law enforcement officials set about enforcing prohibition by tracking down stills and stashes and disposing of them. Throughout the country, raids were made on bootleggers' hideouts and cask after cask of bathtub gin were hacked open by eager police. Unfortunately, prohibition had many unintended consequences. For one thing, it divided the country between dries and wets, those who supported or opposed the 18th Amendment. For another, crime soared as people turned to bootleggers to obtain their liquor. Supplying alcohol to a thirsty populace soon became the province of organized criminal syndicates led by some of the most notorious figures in American history. The problems with legislating morality soon became abundantly clear as underground drinking spots, speakeasies, flourished as millions of Americans evaded prohibition and continued to party like never before. The glamour of the speakeasies proved a powerful attraction and later research showed that more people drank during the 1920s than before prohibition. Alcohol-related deaths increased substantially. In New York City alone, 700 people died in 1927, as opposed to only 84 in 1920. Along the coast, rum fleets took to the sea to run booze past Coast Guard patrols and the rest of the Prohibition Navy, which was allowed to shoot first and ask questions later. The bootleggers and organized syndicates armed themselves and operated sophisticated networks. Some, such as crime lord Al Capone, made tremendous fortunes during Prohibition. In one three-year period, illegal alcohol sales topped $15 million. Around the nation, local district attorneys struggled with a glut of Prohibition cases which sometimes took up over 50% of their time. Law enforcement was costing the country millions. Franklin Roosevelt campaigned against prohibition during the 1932 election, and it was a stance that helped propel him to the White House. Finally, in December of 1933, the United States admitted failure and repealed the Volstead Act. Prohibition, with all its lofty moral goals, had at last come to an end.